This time we'll go to a new business, public speakers on non-agenda items. Let's see here. Stephanie Hicks, Wendell Foster. Chairman Dubrinsky, Vice Chairman Copeland, Board Member Dr. Whitney, thank you for the opportunity tonight. Uh, my name is Wendell Foster, and along with Stephanie I'm Hicks, which is a member, I'm the president of the um, Suffolk Education Association, and we would like to speak with you tonight about putting kids first campaign. Stephanie will um, discuss with you about putting the kids first campaign. This is a campaign that aims to support our students and to provide them the opportunity to realize their dreams and become Virginia's next generation of leaders. Think about the last time you visited a kindergarten classroom. When you looked into the faces of the kindergarten students, you see the smiling face, the sorry, the smiling eyes and the eagerness to learn that underscores the promise of that child. They have dreams about what they will become and their hopes burn bright. They will be in school for the next 12 years, hopefully in Virginia and even here in Suffolk. As a society, we are not doing nearly enough to help that child realize his or her dream. Now, although Virginia ranks the 10th wealthiest state in the country, we are a lowly 39th among all the states in per pupil state funding. Since the Great Recession, began in 2008, the state has cut its education funding by 17%, and we've had 5,000 education cuts, jobs cuts, even though the student enrollments have gone up. This board has seen the results right here. We cut positions, we increased class sizes, we delayed purchases of supplies and durable goods, we haven't been able to provide competitive salaries to employees. We can't allow this to go on, and that's why the Virginia Education Association and the Virginia Parent Teacher Association have joined together for a campaign called Put Kids First. We believe that the Commonwealth has the capacity and knowledge to truly transform the lives of our children by ensuring that every single child has access to a high quality public education from preschool to graduation. So what's stopping us? We know how to substantially improve the lives of Virginia's children, but our decision makers have not shown the will to make it happen. We have not demanded enough from our elected leaders or from ourselves. That must change. If we invest now in the education of Virginia students, we will help every child reach his or her full potential. We will increase the number of graduates ready to begin a high skill career in Virginia's new economy. We will also reduce the human and financial costs associated with school failure and dropouts. Aren't those goals worth fighting for? We need to put an end to the excuses. I'm asking this board, we're asking this board, to support our effort. A copy of a resolution of support has been provided, and we ask you to vote your support for your state, for our statewide effort. I also invite you to join us in publicly showing your support for adequate funding for for Virginia's public schools. On Saturday, August, or sorry, on Saturday, April 18th, we are holding a special rally at the state capitol to support Virginia students and public education. Teachers and other school employees, parents and families, members of the faith community, and many others already committed to join us and demand that our leaders put kids first. I invite all those present to attend the April 18th rally in Richmond and to learn more about the campaign at the website www.goodforvirginia.org 
slash put kids first. We will post updates on the rally details as they are finalized, including our plans for buses that will provide transportation. As I began my remarks, I talked about the children in the kindergarten class. Now, think about those in middle and high school. How bright do those fires still burn for their dreams? We cannot let those dreams die. Join us in demanding that Virginia put kids first. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. I have a question. I, hate, I think it's pretty much evident. What, what kind of support are you looking for other than us to support the initial proposal you have here? Well, well, actually, we are um, we're scheduling to um, we're scheduling buses from self um, parents, um, teachers, just base um, faith community leaders to go to Richmond to um, to this rally that we're going to have in Richmond. We have a website um, up that if parents want to sign up. They can sign up through this website, and transportation will be provided for them to go through go to Richmond. And we would like some of our um, school board members, if you are available at that time to go to Richmond to support um, this effort that the PTA and the Virginia Education Association is putting together. Um, we, we found out that, uh, you know, over the years, um, our legislators are not putting the kids first anymore. They're doing certain things, you know, in Richmond, and we're trying to put a little pressure on them by uh, providing more support for our kids in, in the Commonwealth. Okay. Could you repeat that website, please? Um, goodforvirginia.org backslash put kids first. This is a, a joint effort between the VEA and the Virginia PTA and to kickstart a program that they're hoping will really draw attention to our leaders in the capital in Richmond. And the hope is to get a good 10,000 people to do, to do this march, but then to keep it going on throughout the year um, on through to the governor's new budget, just to keep, not just a one-time deal, to keep pressure on there, keep them understanding that um, the lack of funding is hurting our students here in Virginia. A and Julie Spencer, Kings Fork High School, Kings Fork Middle School. Good evening. Um, tonight we're going to address you uh, regarding the uh, children pick up at Kings Fort Middle School. Um, spoken about this before, but um, first I'd like to uh, read, if I could, the city ordinance as far as fire lanes. And it says, no person shall park a vehicle or permit it to stand, whether attended or unattended, at an intersection of streets or within an area designated as a fire lane. So this is what the law states. The law states that you can't park there and a vehicle can't stop. Um, so this is what it says. Um, problem is this is only being enforced 15, 20 minutes out of the day, only when students are being picked up. It's not being enforced other times. And that being the case, it's created a dangerous situation for the kids in the parking lot, um, and the officer does selectively allow people and vehicles to park in the traffic circle, even during student pickup time. And um, the rest of the day, if you pick up your child early for an appointment or so forth, there's people parked in the traffic circle. After school, there's people parked in the traffic circle. Before school, there's people parked in the traffic circle. And it doesn't matter what type of vehicle. There's been um, vehicles from the, the educational board or from the, that have the Suffolk emblem on the side. There are 
maintenance vehicles, there are police vehicles, nobody's in them, they're parked there, et cetera. And, you know, this um, is the selective enforcement of the law is not actually permitted by law. As read earlier, the ordinance says that you cannot park there. And if, according to our attorney, if the word may was part of the ordinance, the officer has discretion. If that word is not written, as in this case, then the word must is implied. And if you break the law, anyone breaks that law, you must be ticketed. End of story. So we maintain that this is ridiculous, selective, as well as discriminatory enforcement of the law, which is creating, again, a uh, dangerous situation for the kids who walk into, into the parking lot and are helter-skelter throughout the uh, where the cars park in the and the spaces are in the uh, parking lot and nothing's done except for that short period of time throughout the day um, you know we talked extensively to Dr. Whitney about this. The only thing that has actually changed is instead of the staff, the two, two staff members that come out in addition to the officer, instead of them standing in the front of the school, they now <coughs> venture out to the corners of the sidewalk and stand there. I've never seen them speak to a child or a parent or anything. They just seem to stand there. So I don't really know what their purpose is, I guess, to hopefully prevent an accident with the kids coming out there. But I've never seen them probably about twice a week minimum. I see vehicles trying to veer around other vehicles and, I mean, near collisions at least tw twice a week, I would say, minimum. It's, it's dangerous, and I, I just simply don't understand why they can't just stop. I, I don't know why this is a pick-and-choose type of situation. And, again, if it weren't dangerous... I guess it would be okay, but it is, and it's very frustrating as a parent. And it's, it's never been an issue until mid last year is when it started becoming an issue. We have a student that's a sophomore in the high school, and we started with her in this school, and we've always picked up, dropped off. It has never been an issue until about midway through last year. And for whatever reason, they've decided that they're going to enforce it those 15 minutes out of the day. And it just, it, it makes zero common sense. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, we're not making the stuff up. We have numerous pictures, video that we can show any of you all, different times of day, school buses parked in the fire lane with no one in the school bus, um, just different vehicles at any time of the day. They, 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 it's not enforced. If it was so important to enforce this fire lane because of a safety issue for fire trucks being able to get there, I would think that when my student is in the school, if it was that important that it would be enforced during the school day, which it's not. And it's, it's, it's only these 15 minutes. I wish I knew why. It's, it's, no one can state why. They only say, it's the law. Well, it's the law, and it's the law everywhere. It's the law at Oakland Elementary School, but yet every single day at pickup time, there's 40, 50 cars parked in the fire lane because that's their pickup zone. And so this at this particular school, it's created an unsafe situation for students, and it's just, it's just never been that way before, and all of a sudden it is, and just we need to do something about it, not say we're going to do something about it. Well, the law is what they say it is. In terms of what's happening out at the school, I really don't know. I don't know anything about what's going on at the school. I'd like to make a comment, please. I haven't spoken on this issue before because this is my nephew and his wife, and I tried to not be involved in it for that reason. But uh, they read the law, and that is the law, and yet uh, our school system has a benign disregard for this law at Oakland Elementary, for I know for sure, and I don't disagree with the benign disregard of the law because, as Dr. Whitney told me, the policeman told him that they are not going to enforce this law. 
So if they are not going to enforce this law, for God's sake, let these cars that are going to Kings Fork Middle School stop in the same manner that they do in a very organized way at Oakland Elementary. And anybody who wants to can go up to Oakland and see how easy that is, how organized it is, why they can't do that at Kings Fork Middle School, I don't understand. If they're going to dis if we're going to disregard this law, let us disregard it at Kings Fork Middle School as well. Uh, it certainly is correct as far as each school has a separate plan. That plan is one that is uh, attempted to be the safest plan. I personally went out to Kings Fork uh, Middle School, and the plan that they use r currently was very safe. Um, did I see some cars, or do I see, or am I aware of cars stopping in the fire lane, parked in the fire lane? Yes, at each of our schools. Um, if we want to take, if the board directs me to take the position to notify our principals and not have any car parked at any fire lane, then we can do that. Um, but as far as doing the same at each school, I think it's a matter of what works at that school. I'm certainly not suggesting that we don't follow the law. I think that when uh, schools prevent cars from stopping during the, um, during the pickup or dismissal time. It's a matter of because it's a safety issue, cars are pulling out and it has created a problem. I don't think that any principal or administrative team is doing it to, to, to aggravate parents or to uh, challenge parents or because they just want to do it. I think it's because of what they have seen. Each school, and we've done extensive research, has a system. Some systems are better than others. Uh, the information um, that was shared before what the police told us is it was very difficult for them to ticket folks for that. We don't have anyone out there 24, 24 hours a day as far as looking to see who's parked there and to stop them. Staff has been uh, confronted by parents when they try to remind them not to park there, but we're certainly willing to do at the direction of the board. Uh, let me uh, remind you one more time that at Oakland Elementary, it is the plan for cars to stop there, and they all stop there. It is the plan, and the teachers bring the children out, and as one by one, those children get in that car, and that car leaves. It's all very orderly, and it works very well. It certainly does. There is no reason why that same plan cannot be implemented at Kings Fork Middle School. I've been watching this for two years myself, and I'm telling you that these people are making good sense, and they are being ignored by us. I recommend that we follow the plan that is in place and working well at Oakland Elementary, and that means that the cars come up, they get in a line, and they stop, which I agree is breaking the law, but we're already breaking the law at Oakland, and I'm don't know which other schools, but I know you can mention. Every morning letting us stop and drop the kid off. That's breaking the law. I mean, so if we're going to benignly disregard the law, I say let us have a plan at Kings Fork Middle School that really works. And what really works is what Mr. Darden used to do, and that is to allow the, allow the cars to come up one uh, behind each other and stop and when the children come out, they get in the car, the car moves on, and it worked beautifully. Why it can't be continued now, I don't understand. And I don't understand why they have to keep coming back here like this because we're doing nothing really but harassing them. So I recommend, as a board member, that we recommend the plan that works at Oakland Elementary. It can work the same way at Kings Fork Middle School, and they don't have to be bothered, and the other parents that are concerned with this no longer have to complain about this. May, may I, I say something? May I say sure. something? At, at Northern Shores, and I'm there on a regular basis, the fire lane is blocked off. Nobody gets to ride around the circle. Nobody. Uh, they, have, they dismiss in an orderly manner. The teachers are there on the side, but it's elementary school, so there's a difference in middle and elementary school. 
at John Yates Middle School, when I drop my own child, my own niece who lives with me there, we have to go in the parking lot. And we go in the parking lot, there's a line by the auditorium, there's a faculty member there, staff on duty there, and that's how they are dropped off in the morning. And if I want to pick them up, I have to go get them if I want to pick them up. But they come out of school in an oily manner. I, my point is, different schools do it different ways. And I don't know that we want to dictate how somebody is supposed to do it at their school. I think that, that we're going to get into some, some real murky waters if we start saying, because they do it at this school this way, that the other school doesn't have a right to say how they want to do it. Because but if we it have doesn't have work, if it well, doesn't work. Like I said, the, the, the other two schools that, that I go to on a regular basis, I have a nephew at one and a niece at the other one, they don't, they don't, you can't ride around and stop. You just can't do oh, that. As you so mentioned a lot, you can. The, the high school, you can. You can well, pull into the I don't front know. traffic I don't, school. I don't have school. anybody at Nansman River. I don't have anybody there. I don't either. I, I have my daughters I just at have, Kingsport High School. I have middle school. and elementary. And all I'm saying is if, if people do things differently, they do them that way for a reason. I'm, I'm, I, I, and I don't, hey, so I don't know So what's the why. reason? What's the reason at Kings Fork Middle School? Just tell them the reason that you have to travel around like sh circling sharks and you can't stop and it, I mean it dangerous it's dangerous it's and it dangerous. doesn't work all these kids are in this parking lot and the school is designed completely different than Yates That's which is different. completely old and flat and you can see everything from the parking lot go over to Kings Fork Middle it is recessed I've, I've been there. so far you can't yeah, see come on a regular basis with me and pick my daughter up I cannot see her from the parking lot I can't and she's this big, and she's this big, and I'm not going to allow car? her to walk well, in a parking lot with all of those cars just by herself to look for me. It's ludicrous. Well, I don't look, do look, that. Look, I, look. I go inside and pick up my child. I, that's and I have I done do. that. And if that was the excuse standard, me, excuse me. I will let's, do that. Let's, let's do this one more time, okay? Let's get civil, civility here, and let's have one person speaking at a time. We'll give you three more minutes to finish your comments, okay? Go ahead. I, I just want to say something that will make it hopefully simple and to the point, which is I consulted my attorney and he told me to suggest to you all that I'm giving you 30 days to take care of this. If it's not taken care of, then it's going to be on every media outlet and it's going to be taken farther. I feel strongly enough about this that I'm going to push the issue because you're causing an unsafe situation at this school. We it's can't. never happened before. It wasn't the way before. But it's how it is now. And, and there's and no apparent reason that we can find for the why they're doing it. Nobody will say it's because blank, blank, blank. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Uh, I don't know the situation, but uh, I'm going to ask the, uh, I don't know the, the, uh, the ruling per se, but uh, if there's a fire uh, area, uh, I said um, anything of that nature, if you are not, if your car, if you are sitting in the car, you're not parking. You. That, that's what I say, but the law doesn't say that. That's against the law. The, the, they the, read the, the, law. the law. The law actually states that you can't stop in a fire lane. But I, I, I agree with you, I, and I agree that that was, in my opinion, the original problem at this school was there was a handful of parents that thought they were special and could literally park. And when I say park, I mean get out of your car, walk in the building, leave your car there with your flashers on or whatever in front of the school in the fire lane. Instead of dealing with those parents, they have gone haywire and created the situation that we have now. I mean, it, it seems like simple common sense that you have the school officer ticket the ones that literally park in there and cause a problem. The ones that I can show you numerous pictures and video of that literally park in the fire lane. These are the ones causing the problem. They won't deal with those. So instead they create this crazy situation that's dangerous. And we don't, I'm a busy person. I'm a businessman. I work 70 some hours a week. I don't have time to keep coming here and talking about this, but I obviously feel strongly enough about the safety of our children that I have taken time out of my busy schedule to meet with Dr. Whitney, 
about this. I was in his office for probably at least an hour. And it's, I'm not a crazy person. And I also this, feel a little bit insulted that you say that you researched it because I only saw you there once or twice. And to be honest, you can't, that's, that's no basis. As I told you in your office, you can't go once or twice and make, oh, this is, this is nothing. This is no big deal. It's the day in, the day out. There are certain days of the week that there's less parents. There are certain uh, times when you're close to um, holidays and so forth that make a difference. I don't, the rain, weather makes a difference as to how many parents show up and so forth. When there's only a few, it doesn't matter. When there's a lot, it matters. There's a lot of kids, there's a lot of commotion, and it's dangerous. I don't make this stuff up. I think, we, just, ha I think we have the picture. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. William Newsom, various school concerns. William Newsom. William Newsom here. We have any other members of the audience who'd like to come forth? Come on. State your name and your, your address, please. Dr. Dabransky, Dr. Whitney, esteemed members of the board. My name is Todd Eifert. I'm coming to you tonight as the vice president of the Bus Drivers Association. What I'd like to discuss with you tonight is uh, student discipline on the bus and the policy as such. Uh, as of right now, we have 20, 25 students in a 20 by 20 room in the class. Their behavior is well-mannered. Teacher has multiple resources at her hand. The problem is when the kids get on the bus. Now you've doubled from 20. We can uh, transport between 44 and 78 kids in an eight foot by 40, eight foot by 50 area. The problem is the bus drivers are doing their jobs. And you've all given us SOPs, great tools to do our job. The problem is you're not being made applicable through all the administrations. And I'd have to congratulate Hill Point. As far as I know, they're the only school who's practicing the policy. Do that again, I didn't hear that. Hill Point is the only school that's actually practicing and going by the policy, the SOP. And I'm sorry I don't have copies for you all tonight. When a bus driver has a problem with a child, there are certain steps they have to take. First, they have to do a courtesy notice. That's just a little report to mom and dad saying, your kid's not acting right, tighten them up. Then they get a referral. That's another warning. Nothing happens. It's not until we get to the second and third and consequence referrals that uh, something takes place. When you get your second referral, you have one, two, or a three-day <coughs> suspension. When you get your third referral, you have three, four, five-day suspension. And any subsequent referrals after that is greater than five-day suspension or termination from the bus for the year. The problem comes, we have students with six, seven, and eight referrals, and nothing's been done about it. I've actually had a principal tell me, these kids need a chance. Not every kid deserves a trophy, OK? They get their chances, seven of them. I really don't want to see what we saw last year. It took a court case to get a kid removed from the bus. Sexual misconduct referral. He had over six referrals before he got that one. That made the news, that made the internet. So we're not going by the school board policy. And as bus drivers, we're not asking for anything. We're doing what we're supposed to. We call dispatch, we get told to write a referral. These kids are unruly. We have no way to correct them if nothing's being done with the referrals that we write. We can't directly talk to the parents because they don't come to the bus. We got to hold the children accountable, responsible for their actions. What happens in the classroom isn't what happens on the bus. It's a total of difference of night and day. So if we could actually get the administrators to enforce the policy as you've all written it, we might be able to indirectly get to the parents. 
by directly getting to the kids. These parents don't want to bring their kids to school. They don't want to see their kids kicked off the bus at all. These kids are afraid to get referrals. But if they start seeing kids absent for five days, I just got a new group of kids, 47 kids, a month ago. They were off the chain day one. I've had over 22 kids kicked off my bus this year. I'll put my kids up against any school bus there is. The principal got on, vice principal got on the bus the other day. And so these kids always like this? They are now. I think we need to have accountability and responsibility. We can't get to the parents directly. I think these kids, six referrals is a bit much. So if we can get all the students get total application of y'all's policy, I think we'll start seeing better results. We'll actually have bus drivers come to work. Any questions? Thank you.